<coughs> Good evening and uh, welcome to this special broadcast. I am joined in this broadcast by Prema Sridevi, our editor, investigations and viewers. We are about to bring you the biggest interview ever done as far as the Beaufort scam is concerned. To put it very simply, there was one person who stumbled upon the Beaufort's papers. His name is Michael Hirschman. He has never spoken before on television. And what you're going to hear him saying today is really going to be staggering. He's the person who has investigated Beaufort's and he has also at one point of time been part of the Senate committee to investigate the Watergate scam. He is a global legend as far as exposing corruption is concerned. And he is about to say today that he was offered bribes to shield the Gandhi family name. He's also revealing today that he was threatened with death. He was told to accept a $1 million bribe. And if he were not to take the bribe, then he should be ready to be killed. He says that there was a larger plan to shield the Gandhi family. He completely exposes Rajiv Gandhi and a lot more. Now, the critical part of all of this, Prema, is that it's all on record this time. There is nothing to speculate about. There is no insinuation, there aren't even any papers. You have the critical person who's spoken to you on record. How did you manage to get Michael Hirschman on tape, Prema? Well, Arnab, it's, it's been 30 years now, over three decades have passed and finally, Michael Hirschman had, has decided to give a television interview and this is a tell-all interview, Arnab, and this is happening for the first time in the last 30 years that he's decided to face the cameras and speak about the Beaufort scam. In fact, there are a couple of important points that Hirschman goes on to make. For the first time in 30 years, he says that he had given crucial files relating to the Beaufort's investigation to India's finance ministry. He also says that there was a move, a major move by the then uh, Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi to scuttle his probe. He also then very importantly says that now he is willing to come before any agency or a court of law or investigators in India and testify. Arnab, this is so important because if you remember earlier also commissions were set up in 1986-87 commissions were set up right. and Michael Hirschman was asked to come to India and testify. But he did not agree to that because he said that if he came to India, he will be killed. For the first time in the last 30 years, Michael Hirschman has come out in the open and he's saying now that he's willing to come to India and testify and speak the truth about Bofos. And he's, he's, to what extent has he implicated the Gandhis? Well, Arnab. He has spoken about the Gandhi family. He's spoken about his investigation. He said that in the course of uh, figuring out uh, a money laundering scam, which was interested upon him by uh, none other than the finance minister, VP Singh in 1986, who had asked him to probe the financial money laundering scam while H Michael Hirschman was in the US. Yeah. And while Michael Hirschman started probing this Indian financial money laundering scam, That's right. he stumbled upon Bofors right. and he found that there was several payments that were, that were being made by uh, the now, defense company Bofors to certain Swiss bank <laughs> accounts and the moment that happened he says that the Gandhi family started working uh, and uh, the Gandhi Rajiv Gandhi uh, tried to scuttle his probe and uh, basically bribes were offered to him not once not twice but several oh, on several occasions he was offered bribes uh, by people close to the Gandhi family he was asked to write on paper that Rajiv Gandhi was not involved in Bofors these are allegations being leveled by Michael Hirschman who says that people came to me, they approached me, they said, they asked me to write on a piece of paper that Rajiv Gandhi also, was not involved in Bofors. And he also he says, says I was offered. He, he also says at offered, one point, he also says here, Prema, yes you can cross verify and tell us whether this is true. Is it true that he also says that the Congress government was offering arms deals to the notorious arms dealer Adnan Khashoggi if they manage to fix VP Singh. So the arms deals of Rajiv Gandhi also out in the open with this interview. Well, absolutely, Ornab. The Saudi billionaire Adnan Khashoggi is clearly uh, being um, named and mentioned by um, 
uh, Michael Hirschman, when he spoke to me, he said that Adnan Khashoggi, a Saudi billionaire, had approached me and he wanted me uh, to implicate VP Singh in a scam, VP Singh and his son in a scam. But Should they we? also gave me documents. Chandraswamy yeah. was also there. Uh, and when I went through the documents, I got to know that these were forged yeah. documents. And I was uh, asked to look into that scam and I was asked to implicate and discredit VP Singh. But I clearly refused to do that. Well, this is incredible. So, Prema, I think without further ado, let's break the biggest Bofors interview done by our editor investigations. Prema Sridevi and viewers, what you're about to see is the first ever TV interview of a man of the highest credibility. He is the secret Bofors investigator. He is the secret investigator of Bofors and of the Fairfax, head of the Fairfax group. Viewers, Michael Hirschman was also on the United States Senate Watergate Scandal Committee. And he is revealing the darkest details of how the Congress party and Rajiv Gandhi conspired to cover up the Bofor scam. In this interview, he's speaking to Prema Sridevi. And for the record, Republic TV is reopening the investigation in the Bofor scandal. Nineteen eighty six. The year Bofors deal is signed between the Rajiv Gandhi government and Sweden. In March that year, the deal for 410 Hovitzer field guns is complete. While the deal was reported, the scandal hadn't broken yet. Around the same time in 1986, Rajiv Gandhi's finance minister, VP Singh, who had the reputation of being a no-nonsense minister, ordered a probe. He deployed a private investigator who belonged to a company called Fairfax, one of the world's most renowned private security firms. And that's where the story begins. Meet Michael Hirschman, the investigator who landed in India after VP Singh contacted him. Yes, I was. But first, let me, let me say that even though 30 years has passed, my experience is that corruption investigations or allegations may fade over time, but they never truly go away. Yep. So indeed, yes, I was approached uh, by VP Singh and came to India to meet with him. So you met with Mr. VP Singh? I did, when he was finance minister. In the year 1986? Yes. Michael Hirschman of the Fairfax Group is the secret investigator the Indian government deployed. A trained U.S. military intelligence officer who was also part of the Senate Watergate Committee and co-founded Transparency International. A man with an impeccable track record, Hirschman was never meant to look into Bofors. He stumbled upon it while working for VP Singh. What did Mr. VP Singh actually tell you? Did he want you to investigate the Bofors scam or any other scam? What was the content of the discussion when you met him the first time? It had nothing to do with Bofors and I had not even heard of Bofors at that time. Mm. In fact, I think very few people had heard of Bofors. Mm. Um, no, he was conducting with the agreement of um, uh, the president, Rajiv Gandhi, an investigation into violation of currency control laws, that is, hidden assets being taken out of India that were in controversial of the laws, or convening the laws. And um, he had trouble mm. tracking some of the assets outside of India, so he needed an external expert who had um, experience in asset tracing, uh, money laundering, and he asked if I would assist. So basically you were looking at the finances of a lot of NRIs, non-resident Indians abroad. Correct. And then, and how did Bofors happen? Well, we began our investigation um, by looking at a number of banks that were, we felt, being used uh, to transfer these assets. One of the banks was BCCI, and this was before, of course, the BCCI scandal broke, mm. which led to the dissolution of BCCI. Mm. But in investigating BCCI, we found a number of unusual transactions into bank accounts in Switzerland, large transactions that it looked to us to be not currency control law violations, but bribes for arms deals. Okay. And I knew that wasn't in our mandate, but I felt it our responsibility to at least report it to VP Singh. And when we did, uh, he said that he would want 
us to continue to look at this. BP Singh was in a fix. On one hand, he was investigating money laundering without keeping Rajiv Gandhi in the loop. On the other hand, he was onto something big involving his own government. First, let me say that when you're conducting an investigation into asset tracing, money laundering, illegal transfer of funds, hmm. you never know what you're going to turn up when you... True look under the stones or look under the rocks. And so, again, it was clear that we were looking at hundreds of millions of dollars in what clearly uh, was to us bribe money, uh, some of it coming from the Bofors deal in Sweden. And it went to? Well, we don't know. We believe that the majority of it went into a bank account mm -hmm. in Switzerland that was codenamed Mont Blanc. Uh, we recommended, of course, mm. to the CIB mm. that they try to get access into this account. Mm. But unfortunately, when our work was uncovered, um, Rajiv Gandhi got very upset and he established a Supreme Court commission to look into the circumstances surrounding VP Singh's hiring of us. And at the same time, he transferred VP Singh out of the finance ministry to the Ministry of Defense to essentially get him out of the way and impede the investigation. You said Rajiv Gandhi was upset. What was he upset about? Well, this was clearly a sensitive issue for him, and that's a very good question. Mm. If he or his close associates were not involved, then what were they afraid of? They made spurious allegations about me and the Fairfax Group being a mm. front for the CIA and trying to destabilize his government. Frankly, he didn't need our help to destabilize his government. He was doing a good job of it himself. Um, but this is the best defense is a good offense. Yeah. So he went on the offense to try to impede the investigation. I can only assume he did that because he had some personal concerns. So what were these personal concerns of Rajiv Gandhi? Did Rajiv Gandhi try to impede the Bofors investigation? If so, why? Was he worried about any direct link to himself, his family or his party? He well, did? he did, but mm. unfortunately, mm. at about the same time, somehow, mm. and I think it was through mm. our investigation of BCCI, mm. Rajiv Gandhi learned mm. that um, VP Singh had retained us. Hmm. And he reacted very swiftly and very harshly hmm. uh, by, again, going on the floor of the parliament, making hmm. allegations about us, hmm. trying to damage our reputation hmm. um, and to discredit us. Hmm. And uh, he had to do that for some reason. Yeah. Uh, and I can only assume the reason was as, uh, to try to cover up hmm. the work we were doing. So he transferred VP Singh. Hmm. And our investigation became the subject of this special Supreme Court commission. Yeah. Uh, throwing unwanted light onto it. Because when you're doing this sort of investigation, it's very complicated. And it's hard enough to get people to talk yeah. without it being in the newspapers and yeah. on yeah. television. Yeah. Now, um, when he was transferred out, um, VP Singh, did he at any point tell you about why he was transferred out? Did you have any phone conversation with him following his transfer? Or I did, during, because yeah. I, I, I specifically asked how it would impact our investigation mm. and he said look this is an effort to stop the investigation if oh, I'm no longer that. the finance minister I no longer have the authority to continue the investigation okay and then the Thakkar Natarajan Commission was set up yes yeah and the commission came out with a lot of findings about why Fairfax was asked to investigate Bofors in the first place and it's a foreign agency and why should the foreign agency be involved in uh, investigating Indians. H how do you want to react to all those allegations that kept cropping up as far as the Thakkar Natarajan Commission is concerned? This was not an independent inquiry. Yep. They, their findings were preconceived before they collected any information. Uh, it's not that unusual hmm. to retain independent investigative agencies yep. uh, to help conduct sensitive investigations when a government does not have this sort of experience internally yeah. to do them themselves. It's a fairly routine occurrence. 
Uh, they knew that, but this was getting too close to yeah. home. And what I mean by that, I think it was getting far too close to senior members of the Congress party. Rajiv Gandhi reacted swiftly and harshly. VP Singh is removed as the finance minister. The probe suddenly comes to a halt. So who are these senior Congress members who Hirschman says were getting edgy? The story takes a sensational turn. And there was also an offer of bribe. Several. Several? Several. So there was a person called Latif Khan who tried to offer you bribe. Uh, yes. Can you enumerate? Well, it was the first of several offers. Mm. And um, he came to me and offered me money to essentially stop the investigation. I refused. Mm. And then he brought some sort of uh, spurious litigation, mm. which was dismissed. Mm -hmm. uh, there were two other attempts after that to get me to stop. Hmm. the investigation. Hmm. Um, uh, the first attempt pr probably was, uh, I mean, um, of a person called Mr. Siddiqui or Mr. Yunus who approached you? Well, the first... They no, wanted the first, you to sign on a document? Well, that was yeah. that came later, yeah. uh, actually. And, hmm. uh, the second attempt when, was when I was in the middle of the BCCI investigation hmm. and specifically looking into the Bombay branch of BCCI hmm. that I was offered by someone who approached me in my hotel in London hmm. a million dollar bribe to hmm. stop the investigation. And I said, if I don't, hmm. he, he said, you'll be killed. Hmm. So this was regarding the BCCI or the BOFOS or both? Both. Both. And what about the second time? I mean, the third time? The third the, time yeah. was very interesting. I got yeah. a call from the chief of staff for um, um, Mr. Um, Mr. Khashoggi, yeah. who at that time was a well-known Saudi billionaire, hmm. uh, at that time the richest man in the world. Hmm. That he, he wanted to meet with me hmm. uh, on a mer matter of great sensitivity. Hmm. And he invited me to meet with him at hmm. his home in Spain. Hmm. And when I went to his home, I found uh, waiting for me was a um, uh, Indian Swami. Was it Chandra Swami? Chandra Swami. Oh, okay. And hmm. he sat down with me hmm. and Mr. Khashoggi. Hmm. And this is at the point where um, VP Singh was running for prime minister. Hmm. And he said that they had documents that could show hmm that VP Singh's son had hidden bank accounts hmm. in, I believe it was the Cayman Islands. Hmm. They showed me these documents. Hmm. Uh, I immediately saw that they were forged, that hmm. they were counterfeit documents, hmm. and I refused to cooperate. Hmm. Um, they wanted you to implicate VP Singh in a scam to or his son? To discredit him. Oh. They were fearful hmm. that if VP Singh became the prime minister, that hmm. he would be in a position to continue hmm. the Bofors investigation. Did Chandraswamy also speak about the Bofors uh, investigation? Well, he did. It, as, yeah. as a backdrop to hmm. this conversation about me exposing VP Singh, hmm. both Khash Khashoggi and he hmm. talked about the fact that hmm. um, that it would be only fair, hmm. given the fact that I conducted this investigation on behalf of VP Singh hmm. into um, currency control law violations and Bofors, hmm. the only fair that I know hmm. that VP Singh does not have clean hands. Hmm. And um, but I saw through this, and later I was told that Khashoggi was hmm. promised. Hmm. large defense contracts in India hmm. if he was able to discredit VP Singh. Hmm. But he was not going to use me to do that. Hmm. Eventually, hmm. apparently, they did make these documents public hmm. and they were shown to be false and I believe that the hmm. that Chandra Swami eventually went to prison. Yeah. Now, Gordon Mackey, uh, who was the VP of Fairfax, yes. he had made a statement at that point in time where he said that the Thakkar Natarajan Commission was a hatchet job for protecting one leader and that one leader is Rajiv Gandhi. Uh, he also said that the government of India has ignored a great deal of investigation which was done by Fairfax. What is the kind of investigation? Because Thakkar Natarajan Commission has always been saying that Fairfax has not 
provided any documents. There well, is that's no not true. Yeah. We provided a great deal of information. On both foes. On both issues okay. related to BCCI money laundering and to BCCI and to Bofors, to the criminal investigation group hmm. in um, the finance ministry. Hmm. What happened to that information after the investigation was stopped, I don't know. Three attempts made to bribe the secret investigator. This is where the story gets curious. Hirschman is invited by Adnan Khashoggi, a high-flying arms dealer who was connected to every head of state. He operated with ease around the world and lured power brokers with luxury. His good friend was this man, Chandra Swami. What was Chandra Swami doing in Spain with an arms dealer and what did they want from Michael Hirschman, the man who stumbled upon the Beaufort scam through his investigation? Swami also speak about the Bofors uh, investigation? Well, he did. It, as, yeah. as a backdrop to mm. this conversation about me exposing VP Singh, mm. both Khashoggi and he mm. talked about the fact that, mm. um, that it would be only fair, mm. given the fact that I conducted this investigation on behalf of VP Singh mm. into um, currency control law violations and Bofors, mm. the only fear that I know mm. that VP Singh does not have clean hands mm. and um, but I saw through this and later I was told that Khashoggi was mm. promised mm. large defense contracts in India mm. if he was able to discredit VP Singh. Mm. But he was not going to use me to do that. Mm. Eventually, mm. apparently, they did make these documents public mm. and they were shown to be false and I believe that the mm. that Chandra Swami eventually went to prison. What's interesting about this story is how Michael Hirschman discovered Bofors, which reveals the Congress extent of corruption. The story of a shadowy bank involved in money laundering and the claims of a briefcase that allegedly changed hands. But when VP Singh was asking you to get into Bofors also. Did the Prime Minister then know that the Finance Minister had wanted you to investigate Bofors or was this some sort of a secret investigation that was going on? I don't know whether he ever discussed yeah. with VP Singh hmm. that we had uncovered this information. I believe, hmm. I'm sorry, I don't think that VP Singh discussed with Rajiv Gandhi. I don't know hmm. if he did. Hmm. Rajiv Gandhi, however, learned of it. Mm. And I believe he learned of it through BCCI mm. because when the Bombay branch of mm. BCCI was mm. raided mm. by the head of the Criminal Bureau of Investigation and mm. closed down, mm. we found out that the president of BCCI, that was Pakistani, flew in to meet with Rajiv Gandhi and he was carrying a large briefcase with him. Mm. Uh, I know that within the next 48 hours, Rajiv Gandhi ordered the bank to be reinstated, to be re reopened, and the managers who mm. were imprisoned mm. to be released. You know, so we have a saying in the United States, mm. if it looks like a duck, it walks like a duck and talks like a duck, it's usually a duck. <laughs> yeah, right. You were also talking about earlier, I've read a couple of articles where you also speak about how difficult it was for you to move around and you had to use certain other names, nicknames. Tell us more about that. What is this Dr. Harris all about? So um, when I was first asked to come yeah. to India to mm. talk about this mm. very sensitive investigation, this yeah. currency control law investigation, mm. I was told that it'd be preferable if I not use my real name. Um, I had no, I'd been known here because I headed an, a government investigatory and audit agency for the U.S. government that had offices here in New Delhi. So I had a profile here and I just assumed that this was so sensitive that they didn't want my name to be uh, known. Hmm. So who, who conveyed that to you? Was it the finance minister or the... That was Burelal. Burelal. So he asked you to uh, go walk around with a different name? Well, <laughs> you don't walk around with a different name. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have a sign on me, that's it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got that. 
Now, as soon as you uh, started investigating the BCCI, that's when you uh, the Bofors investigation came to an end, because that's when very shortly thereafter. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think the critical point hmm. was the the raid on the Bombay branch. Hmm. Um, it was just after, if my if my memory serves me correct, it was hmm. around that time hmm. when uh, Rajiv Gandhi empowered the Takah Commission. Hmm to look into why we were hired. Hmm. So uh, there were some arrests also that were, that was made at that time. Some BCCI officials were arrested. Exactly. Republic TV in its pursuit of the truth in the Beaufort scandal exposed the clean chit given by the company to Gandhis on the request of Rajiv Gandhi. Viewers, they may deny it, but the fact is this. The Congress government of Rajiv Gandhi forced Beaufort's to give a clean shit to the Gandhi family. That clean shit was given by Bofors to shield the Gandhis. Now listen to who else received calls asking to sign a letter giving Gandhis a clean shit. In the words of the man who first stumbled upon Bofors. You were also asked to sign on a letter saying that Rajiv Gandhi is not involved in the Bofors deal? Yes. Was that true? Yes. Who asked you to do that? This gentleman from uh, the United States who eventually sued us, hmm. uh, in exchange for money, he wanted me to sign a document, hmm. and I said no. What was his name? I think um, it was Khan. You were also threatened with dire consequences? Not the first time, probably won't be the last. Okay. But the Tucker Natarajan Commission wanted you to come to India and uh, uh, face the questions, but you didn't. you chose not to. Why? I was told if I came to India, I would be killed. Who said that to you? I, it was said in a telephone call. Unknown call? Private call? Unknown call. Okay. But at the time, I was receiving every day when I got into the office or every other day, yeah. I would receive someone from the Indian Embassy in Washington, D.C., who would hand me a nice envelope with a wax seal asking me to come and appear before the Dakar Commission. Mm -hmm. I told them that I'd be very willing to testify before the Commission in the United States. Mm -hmm. They decided not to take me up on that. Bribe offers, death threats, secret and desperate meetings. It seems to be clear that Congress and Rajiv Gandhi government were uncomfortable. These shocking revelations leave India no choice but reopen the Bofors files. Why do you think, I'm coming to my to the last, probably the, one of the last questions here. Why do you think the Bofors case has taken so long? It's been 30 years, over 30 years. It's been three decades now. We still don't know what happened. The CBI registered a case in 1990. That chart sheet was filed in 1999. Quattrochi was arrested in Argentina, but then he was let off. Indian government presented a very weak case before the court there. Um, the CBI almost, it, it looked like they were not talking against Quattrochi, but they, on behalf of Quattrochi in the court. So there have been several loopholes at various levels. But as an outsider who's looking at this entire scam, what do you think is the real cause behind the Bofors um, deal not reaching its logical end? Because I think that there are still very powerful politicians in this country that are at risk of being identified as having taken Bofors' money. Yeah. If you are ever asked by an Indian government, now or in the future, to testify um, before an agency, a commission, or a court of law regarding the findings of the Bofors' deal, that's when the time when you were probing it, would you be open to it? If it's a credible request, if I really do believe that there is a will to get to the bottom of it, and it's not just some public relations stunt, I certainly would be open to it. From the first interview of Sten Lindstrom, the chief Bofors investigator,